Hola amigos, bien o no, y saludos desde Medellín. Um, hoy continua, continuamos poquito con el, uh, los vídeos con el, los días antes y pensamos claro, ok, so entendemos el proceso, cómo enfocarnos con estudiar, con vocabulario, mejorando una pronunciación, buscamos para temas más útil para nosotros y como vamos también a practicar um, leer en voz alta para mejorar la pronunciación y por cierto escuchamos con muchas cosas para mejorar nuestro oído y el, el vocabulario. Y también toma la opción o la, la oportunidad para utilizar un forma de vocabulario muy útil, muy breve, pero también muy preciso para comunicar nuestras ideas. Entonces, ¿cómo puedo empezar? So, this is the theme of hoy. So, okay, looking back over what we've done the last couple of days on the videos here, we've revised um, ways we can look at improving our pronunciation, There's ways we can use reading to help us um, both improve that and also improve our technical vocabulary for themes and topics that we need more specifically, more relevant to us. We've looked at finding ways to listen out for perhaps unusual phrases that are going to be useful to us and um, what that we hear commonly um, and particularly to listen to lots of new things to help us improve our ear if you like for the new language and again help us improve our general vocabulary maybe not so much the more specifics and particularly to try and take advantage of the opportunity we have to give ourselves a better type of language to communicate our ideas generally, because we have to be selective. We perhaps don't have the, the chance of memorizing thousands of words. So if we're going to be selective at all, try to think of ways we can pick uh, so that the words we choose are the best ones we could use to communicate our, our thoughts in particular situations. So where to start? What's the best way to do that? Well, let's get some ideas on that. Um, first thing to think about is look at the conversations you normally have. What are the ones you have more often than others? Um, I would think perhaps some type of introducing yourself and giving some type of summary of either who you are, where you're from. But perhaps if you're doing this more in a work environment, it might be something to do with jobs you've done before, or saying something more about what you're good at, what's the specialism that you know a lot about. So that's one way to start predicting the type of questions people are commonly going to ask you. And as well as that, we can think of, okay, what's the most difficult question? Put me in a situation which is the most difficult one. What's the situation I'm going to find more difficult or potentially stressful? Think of that. There we go, put a sound effects for us. Um, so let's give it as an example. Um, let's say we're going through customs at the, uh, at the airport. That's not exactly a pleasant experience, is it? You always ask random questions. Um, how do we deal best with that type of conversation? Just as an example. Think of good ways we can answer those type of questions and still remain calm. Um, now, I've covered this in one of my other videos, some different ways we can use perhaps to help us with that conversation, but that's a good example. Maybe in your job you have to deal with uh, client services, things like that. So you have clients ringing you or speaking to you, or you're in meetings where you have to deal with client objections or complaints. 
what's the worst example you have? How are you going to deal with that? Because unfortunately, as well as thinking about the nice things we want to say, sometimes we need to prepare ourselves for what could be um, a less pleasant conversation, perhaps a more stressful conversation. But if we have control over that, in the sense that we have prepared some type of answer, particularly one that gives us a bit more time to think about the next couple of words we're going to say, that I think is a good place to practice because we can do that so it's nearly automatic. It stops us feeling nervous in that situation because we know exactly the kind of thing we're going to say. And it should win us a bit more time to think if we're not very clear about the questions or the situation feels a bit stressful. So that's something else to think about. Um, because we can practice the more standard day-to-day -day, uh, activities, should we say, things we normally do, but the surprising stuff, the more stressful stuff, um, that's the stuff that's going to catch us by surprise. Perhaps when we, we're less ready for that, even though really it's quite an important conversation. So when you come off that 14-hour international flight um, and you're not exactly feeling at your best, being fronted by um, angry customs officials isn't going to put you in a good mood. But if you practice the type of uh, answers you can calmly give to that situation, it'll go a lot better because you won't feel panicked. So it might not be the most cheerful place to start. Um, perhaps it is nicer just to think about uh, happy conversations we can have at cocktail parties. But as well as that, think carefully about a few of those other situations. Um, there might be a case, well, okay, well, look, in this situation, what happens if it goes wrong? What would I say then? So it's not that we're predicting the worst thing to happen. It's just that we might as well be prepared in case it, something like that occurs. Um, because that's when we're going to need to be on top of our game and at our best in the sense of clear vocabulary, good pronunciation, make sure we're understood. So um, have a think about that. That's the challenge for today. Um, whilst we should always be optimistic, because that's why we're doing these new languages, it's going to be an interesting and very um, fulfilling experience. When we're, but we have to think occasionally, OK, well, in this situation, what if it goes wrong? What would I say? Um, think about that. Come up with some phrases. Um, that's a good place to start in terms of choosing your minimal vocabulary, because we don't want long sentences for that. And see how you go. Déjeme saber en los comentarios, como siempre. But for now, for Medellín, before the, uh, the storms arrive, I'll say cheerio.